Constitution of India, Part 5, The Union, Articles 89 to 123. Officers of Parliament, Article 89. The Chairman and the Deputy Chairman of the Council of States. The Vice President of India shall be the ex officio Chairman of the Council of States. The Council of States shall, as soon as may be, choose a member of the Council to be Deputy Chairman thereof. And so often as the office of Deputy Chairman becomes vacant, the Council shall choose another member to be Deputy Chairman thereof. Article 90. Vacation and resignation of and removal of, removal from the office of Deputy Chairman. A member holding office as Deputy Chairman of the Council of States shall vacate this office if he ceases to be member of the Council. May at any time, by writing under his hand, address to the Chairman, resign his office. And may be removed from his office by a resolution of the Council passed by a majority of all the then members of the Council, provided that no resolution for the purpose of Clause C shall be moved unless at least 14 days notice has been given of the intention to move the resolution. Article 91. Power of Deputy Chairman or other person to perform the duties of the office of or to act as Chairman. While the office of Chairman is vacant, or during any period when the Vice President is acting as or discharging the functions of President, the duties of the office shall be performed by the Deputy Chairman. Or if the office of Deputy Chairman is also vacant by such member of the Council of States as the President may appoint for the purpose. During the absence of the Chairman from any sitting of the Council of States, the Deputy Chairman or if he is also absent, such person as may be determined by the rules of procedure of the council, or if no such person is present, such other person as may be determined by the council shall act as chairman. Article 92. The chairman or the deputy chairman not to preside while a resolution for his removal from office is under consideration. At any sitting of the council of states, while any resolution for the removal of the vice president from his office is under consideration, the chairman or while any resolution for the removal of the deputy chairman from his office is under consideration, the deputy chairman shall not, though he is present, preside and provisions of clause 2 of article 91 shall apply in relation to every such a sitting as they apply in relation to a sitting from which the chairman or as the case may be the deputy chairman is absent. The chairman shall have the right to speak in and otherwise to take part in the proceedings of the council of states while any resolution for the removal of the vice president from his office is under, under consideration in the council. But notwithstanding anything in article 100 shall not be indicted to vote at all on such a resolution or on any other matter during such proceedings. Article 93, the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker of the House of the People. The House of the People shall as soon as may be choose two members of the House to be respectively Speaker and Deputy Speaker thereof. And so often as the Office of Speaker or Deputy Speaker becomes vacant, the House shall choose another member to be Speaker or Deputy Speaker as the case may be. Article 94, vacation and resignation of and removal from Offices of Speaker and Deputy Speaker. A member holding office as Speaker or Deputy Speaker of the House of the People shall vacate his office if he ceases to be a member of the House of the People. May at any time by writing under his hand, hand addressed if such member is a Speaker to the Deputy Speaker and if such member is a Deputy Speaker then to the Speaker assign his office and may be removed from his office by a resolution of the House of the People passed by a majority of all the then members of the House. Provided that no resolution for the purpose of Clause C shall be moved unless at least 14 days notice has been given to the intention to move the resolution. Provided further that whenever the House of the People is dissolved, the Speaker shall not vacate his office until immediately before the first meeting of the House of People after the dissolution. Article 95. 
power of the deputy speaker or other person to perform the duties of the office of or to act as speaker while the office of speaker is vacant the duties of the office shall be performed by the deputy speaker or if the office of deputy speaker is also vacant by such member of the house of the people as the president may appoint for the purpose during the absence of the speaker from any sitting of the house of people the deputy speaker or if he is also absent such person as may be determined by the rules of the procedure of the house or if no such person is present such other person as may be determined by the house shall act as speaker article 96 the speaker or the deputy speaker not to preside while a resolution for his removal from office is under consideration at any sitting of the house of the people while any resolution for the removal of the speaker from his office is under consideration the speaker or while any resolution for the removal of the deputy speaker from his office is under consideration the deputy speaker shall not though he is present preside and the provisions of clause 2 of article 95 shall apply in relation to every such a sitting as they apply in relation to a sitting from from which the speaker or as the case may be the deputy speaker is absent the speaker shall have the right to speak in and otherwise to take part in the proceedings of the house of the people while any resolution for his removal from office is under consideration in the house and shall not be standing anything in article 100 be entitled to vote only in the first instance on such a resolution or on any other matter during such proceedings but not in the case of an equality of votes article 97 salaries and allowances of the chairman and deputy chairman and the speaker and the deputy speaker there shall be paid to the chairman and deputy chairman of the council of states and to the speaker and the deputy speaker of the house of the people such as salaries and allowances as may be respectively fixed by the parliament by law and until the provision that we have is so made such as salaries and allowances as as specified in the second schedule article 98 secretariat of parliament each house of parliament shall have a separate secretarial staff provided that nothing in this clause shall be construed as preventing the creation of post to common to both house of both houses of parliament parliament may by law regulate the recruitment and the conditions of service of or service of persons appointed to the secretarial staff of either house of parliament until provision is made by parliament under clause 2 the president may after consultation with the speaker of the house of the people or the chairman of the council of states as the case may be make rules regulating the recruitment and the conditions of service of persons appointed to the secretarial staff of the house of the people or the council of states and any rules so made shall have effect subject to the provisions of any law made under the said clause article 99 oath or affirmation by members every member of either house of parliament shall before taking his seat make and subscribe before the president or some other person appointed in that behalf by him an oath or affirmation according to the form set out for the purpose in the third schedule article 100 voting in houses power of houses to act notwithstanding vacancies and quorum save as otherwise provided in this constitution all questions at any sitting of either house or joint sitting of the houses shall be determined by a majority of votes of the members present and voting other than the speaker or the person acting as chairman or speaker the chairman or speaker or person acting as such shall not vote in the first instance but shall have and exercise a casting vote in the case of equality of votes either house of parliament shall have power to act not withstanding any vacancy in the membership thereof and any proceedings in parliament shall be valid not withstanding that it is discovered subsequently that some person who was not entitled to do so sat or voted or otherwise took part in the proceedings until parliament by law otherwise provides the quorum to constitute a meeting of either house of parliament shall be one tenth of the total number of members of the house if at any time during a meeting of a house 
there is no quorum it shall be the duty of the chairman or speaker or person acting as either to adjourn the house or to suspend the meeting until there is a quorum disqualifications of members article 101 vacation of seats no person shall be a member of both houses of parliament and provision shall be made by parliament by law for the vacation by a person who is chosen a member of both houses of his seat in one house or other no person shall be a member both of parliament and of a house of the legislature of a state and if a person is chosen a member both of parliament and of a house of legislature of a state then at the expiration of such period as may be specified in the rules made by the president that person's seat in parliament shall become vacant unless he has previously resigned his seat in the legislature of the state if a member of either house of parliament becomes subject to any of the disqualification mentioned in 3 uh, mentioned in uh, clause 1 or class 2 of article uh, 102 or resigns a seat by writing under his hand addressed to the chairman or the speaker as the case may be and his resignation is accepted by the chairman or the speaker as the case may be his seat shall thereupon become vacant provided that in the case of any resignation referred to in sub clause b if from information received or otherwise and after making such inquiry as he thinks fit the chairman or the speaker as the case may be he is satisfied that such a resignation is not voluntary or genuine he shall not accept such a resignation if for a period of 60 days a member of either house of parliament is without permission of the house absent from all the meetings thereof the house may declare his seat vacant provided that in computing the set period of 60 days no account shall be taken of any period during which the house is prorogued or is adjourned for more than four consecutive days article 102 disqualification for membership a person shall be disqualified for being chosen as and for being a member of either houses of parliament if he holds any office of profit under the government of india or the government of any state other than office declared by parliament by law not to disqualify its holder if he is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a competent court if he is an undischarged insolvent if he is not a citizen of india or has voluntarily acquired the citizenship of a foreign state or is under any acknowledgement of allegiance or adherence to a foreign state if he is so disqualified by or under any law made by parliament explanation for the purpose of this clause a person shall not be deemed to hold an office of profit under the government of india or government of any state by reason only that he is a minister either for the union or for such or such state the person shall be disqualified for being a member of either house of parliament if he is so disqualified under the 10th schedule article 103 decision on questions as to disqualification of members if any question arises as to whether a member of either house of parliament has become subject to any of the disqualifications mentioned in clause 1 of article 102 the question shall be referred for the decision of the parliament and his decision shall be final before giving any decision on such a on any such question the president shall obtain the opinion of the election commission and shall act according to such opinion article 104 penalty for sitting and voting for making oath or affirmation before article 99 or when not qualified or when disqualified if a person sits or votes as a member of either house of parliament before he has complied with the requirements of article 99 or when he knows that he is not qualified or that he is disqualified for membership thereof or that he is prohibited from uh, so doing by the provisions of any law made by the parliament he shall be liable in respect of each day on which he so sits or votes to a penalty of 500 rupees to be recovered as a debt due to the union
powers, privileges and immunities of parliament and its members. Article 105. Powers, privileges, etc. of the Houses of Parliament and of the members and committees thereof. Subject to the provisions of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure of Parliament, there shall be freedom of speech in Parliament. No member of Parliament shall be liable to any proceedings in any court in respect of anything said or any vote given by him in Parliament or any committee thereof, and no person shall be so liable in respect of publication by or under the authority of either House of Parliament of any report, paper, votes, or proceedings. In other respects, the powers, privileges, and immunities of each House of Parliament and of the members and the committees of each House shall be such as may from time to time be defined by Parliament by law and until so defined shall be those of that house and of its members and committees immediately before and the coming into force of section 15 of the constitution 44th amendment act of 1978 the provisions of class 1 2 3 shall apply in relation to persons who by virtue of his constitution this constitution have the right to speak in and otherwise to take part in the proceedings of a house of parliament or any committee thereof as they apply in relation to the members of parliament. Article 106. Salaries and allowances of members. Members of either house of parliament shall be entitled to receive such salaries and allowances as may from time to time be determined by parliament by law and until provision in that respect is so made allowances at such rates and upon such conditions as were immediately before the commencement of this constitution, applicable in the case of members of the Constituent Assembly of the Dominion of India. Legislative Procedure Article 107 Provisions as to introduction and passing of bills Subject to the provision of Article 109 and 117 with respect to money bills, and other financial bills, a bill may originate in either House of Parliament. Subject to the provisions of Article 108 and 109, a bill shall not be deemed to have been passed by the Houses of Parliament unless it has been agreed to by both Houses, either without amendment or with such amendments, only as are agreed to by both Houses. A bill pending in Parliament shall not lapse any reason of the prorogation of the Houses. A bill pending in the Council of States, which has not been passed by houses, House of People, shall not lapse on the dissolution of the House of the People. A bill which is pending in House of People, or which having been passed by the House of the People, is pending in the Council of States shall subject to the provisions of Article 108, lapse on the dissolution of the House of People. Article 108, joint sitting of both Houses in certain cases. If after a bill has been passed by one House and transmitted to the other House, the bill is rejected by, house of, uh, by one, uh, other House, or the Houses have finally disagreed as to the amendments to be made in the bill, or more than six months elapsed from the date of the reception of the bill by the other house without the bill being passed by. The President may, unless the bill has elapsed by reason of a dissolution of the House of the People, notify to the Houses by message if they are sitting or by public notification if they are not sitting. His intention to summon them to meet in a joint sitting for the purpose of deliberating and voting on the bill, provided that nothing in this clause shall apply to a money bill. In reckoning any such period of six months, as, as is referred to in Clause 1, no account shall be taken of any period during which the House referred to in subclause C of that clause is prorogued or adjourned for more than four consecutive days. That the President has under Clause 1 notified his intention of summoning the Houses to meet in a joint sitting. Neither House shall proceed further with the bill 
but the president may at any time after the date of his notification summon the houses to meet in a joint sitting for the purpose specified in the notification and if he does so the houses shall meet accordingly if at the joint sitting of the two houses houses the bill with uh, such amendments if any as are agreed to in joint sitting is passed by a majority of the total number of members of both houses present and voting it shall be deemed for the purposes of this constitution to have been passed by both houses mm. provided that at a joint sitting if the bill having been passed by one house has not been passed by the other house with amendments and returned to the house in which it originated no amendment shall be proposed to the bill other than such amendments if any as are made necessary by the delay in the passage of the bill if the bill has been so passed and returned only such amendments as aforesaid shall be proposed to the bill and such other amendments as are relevant to the matters with respect to which the house have not agreed and the decision of the person presiding as to the amendments which are admissible under this clause shall be final a joint sitting may be held under this article and a bill passed there at not withstanding that the dissolution of the house of the people has intervened since the president notified his intention to summon the houses to meet there in article 109 special procedure in in respect of money bills a money bill shall not be introduced in the council of states after a money bill has been passed by the house of house of the people it shall be transmitted to the council of states for its recommendations and the council of state shall within a period of 14 days from the date of its receipt of the bill return the bill to the house of the people with its recommendations and the house of the people may thereupon either accept or reject all or any of the recommendations of the council of states if the house of the people accepts any of the recommendations of the council of states the money bill shall be deemed to have been passed by both houses with the amendments recommended by the council of states and accepted by the house of the people if the house of the people does not accept any of the recommendations of the council of states the money bill shall be deemed to have been passed by both houses in the form in which it was passed by the house of the people without any of the amendments recommended by the council of states if a money bill passed by the house of the people and transmitted to the council of states for its recommendations is not returned to the house of the people within the set period of 14 days it shall be deemed to have been passed by both the houses at the expiration of the set period in the form in which it was passed by the house of people article 110 definition of money bills for the purposes of this chapter a bill shall be deemed to be a money bill if it contains only provisions dealing with all or any of the following matters namely the imposition abolition remission alteration and regulation of any tax the regulation of the borrowing of money or giving of any guarantee by the government of india or the amendment of the law with respect to any financial obligations undertaken or to be undertaken by the government of india the custody of the consolidated fund or the contingency fund of india the payment of money into or withdrawal of money from any such fund the appropriation of money out of the consolidated fund of india the declaring of any expenditure had to be expenditure charged on the consolidated fund of india or the increasing of the amount of any such expenditure the receipt of money on account of the consolidated fund of india or the public account of india or the custody or issue of such money or audit of the accounts of the union or of a state or any matter incidental to any of the matters specified in sub clause a to f a bill shall not be deemed to be a money bill by reason only that it provides for the imposition of fines or other pecuniary penalties 
or for demand or payment of fees for licenses or fees of for services rendered or by reason that it provides for the imposition, abolition, remission, alteration or regulation of any tax by any local authority or body for local purposes. If any question arises whether a bill is a money bill or not, the decision of the Speaker of the House of the people thereon shall be final. There shall be endorsed on every money bill when it is transmitted to the Council of States under Article 109 and when it is presented to the President for assent under Article 111, the certificate of the Speaker of the House of the People signed by him that it is a money bill. Article 111, Ascended Bills. When a bill has been passed by the Houses of Parliament, it shall be presented to the President and the President shall declare either that he assents to the bill or that he withholds assent there, therefrom. Provided that the President may, as soon as possible, after the presentation to him of a bill for a center, return the bill if it is not a money bill to the House, with a message requesting that they will reconsider the bill or any specified provisions thereon, and in particular will consider the desirability of introducing any such amendments, as he may recommend in his message. And when a bill is so returned, the Houses shall reconsider the bill accordingly. And if the bill is passed again by the Houses, with or without amendments and presented to the and presented to the President for assent, the President shall not withhold assent therefore. Procedure in financial matters. Article 112. Annual Financial Statement. The President shall, in respect of every financial year, cause to be laid before both the Houses of Parliament a statement of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the Government of India for that year, in this part referred to as the Annual Financial Statement. The estimates of expenditure embodied in Annual Financial Statement shall show separately the sums required meet expenditure described by this constitution as expenditure charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India. And the sums required to meet other expenditure proposed to be made from the Consolidated Fund of India and shall distinguish expenditure on revenue account from other expenditure. The following expenditure shall be expenditure charged on the Consolidated Fund of India. The emoluments and allowances of the President and other expenditure relating to his office. The salaries and allowances of the Chairman and the Deputy Chairman of the Council of States and the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker of the House of the People. Debt charges for which the Government of India is liable, including interest, sinking fund charges and redemption charges and other expenditure relating to the uh, raising of loans and the service and redemption of debt. The salaries, allowances and pensions payable to or in respect of judges of Supreme Court. The pensions payable to or in respect of judges of Federal Court. The pensions payable to or in respect of judges of any High Court which exercises jurisdiction in relation to any area included in the territory of India or which at any time before the commencement of this constitution exercised jurisdiction in relation to any area included in a governor's province of the dominion of India. The salary, allowances and pension payable to or in respect to the controller and director general of India. Any sums required to satisfy any judgment, decree or award of any court or arbitral tribunal. Any other expenditure declared by this constitution or parliament by law to be so charged. Article 113. Procedure in Parliament with respect to estimates. So much of the estimates as relates to expenditure charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India shall not, shall not be submitted to the vote of Parliament. But nothing in this clause shall be construed as preventing the, decision, the discussion in either House of Parliament of any of those estimates. So much of the said estimates as relates to other expenditure shall be submitted in the form of demands for grants to the House of the People, and the House of the People shall have power to assent or to refuse to assent to any demand 
or to assent to any demand subject to a, to a reduction of the amount specified therein. No demand for a grantee shall be made except on the recommendation of the President. Article 114, Appropriation Bill. As soon as maybe after the grants under Article 113 have been made by the House of the People, there shall be introduced a bill to provide for the appropriation out of the Consolidated Fund of India of all monies required to meet the grants so made by the House of the People and the expenditure charged on the Consolidated Fund of India, but not exceeding in any case the amount shown in the statement previously laid before Parliament. No amendment shall be proposed to any such bill in either House of Parliament, which will have effect of varying the amount or altering the destination, destination of any grant so made, or of varying the amount of any expenditure charged on the Consolidated Fund of India, and the decision of the person deciding as to whether an amendment is inadmissible under this clause shall be final. Subject to the provisions of Article 115 and 116, no money shall be withdrawn from the Consolidated Fund of India except under appropriation made by law passed in accordance with the provisions of this article. Article 115, Supplementary Additional and Excess Grants The President shall, if the amount authorized by any law made in accordance with the provisions of Article 114, to be extended for a particular service for the current financial year is found to be insufficient for the purposes of that year or when a need has arisen during the current financial year for supplementary or additional expenditure upon some a new service not contemplated in the annual financial statement for that year or if any money has been spent on any service during a financial year in excess of the amount granted for that service and for that year a cause to be laid before both the Houses of Parliament. Another statement showing the estimated amount of that expenditure or cause to be presented to the House of the People a demand for such excess as the case may be. The provisions of Article 112, 113 and 114 shall have effect in relation to any such statement and expenditure or demand and also to any law to be made authorizing the appropriation of monies out of the Consolidated Fund of India to meet such expenditure or the grant in respect of such demand as they have effect in relation to the annual financial statement and the expenditure mentioned therein or to a demand for a grant and the law to be made for the authorization of appropriation of monies out of the Consolidated Fund of India to meet such expenditure or grants. Article 116. Votes on account. Votes of credit and exceptional grants. Notwithstanding anything in the foregoing provisions in this chapter, the House of the People shall have power to make any grant in advance in respect to the estimated expenditure for a part of any financial year pending the completion of the procedure prescribed in Article 113 for the voting of such grant and passing of law in accordance with the provisions of Article 114 in relation to that expenditure. To make a grant for meeting an unexpected demand upon the resources of India when on account of the magnitude or the indefinite character of the service, the demand cannot be stated with the details ordinarily given in an annual financial statement. To make an exceptional grant which forms no part of the current service of any financial year, and Parliament shall have power to authorize by law the withdrawal of monies from the Consolidated Fund of India for the purposes for which the said grants are made. The provisions of Article 113 and 114 shall have effect in relation to making of any grant under Clause 1 and to any law to be made under that clause as they have effect in relation to the making of a grant with regard to any expenditure mentioned in the annual financial statement and the law to be made for the authorization of appropriation of monies out of the Consolidated Fund of India to meet such expenditure. 
Article 117 Special Provisions as to Financial Bills A bill or amendment making provision for any of the matters specified in subclause A to F of clause 1 of Article 110 shall not be introduced or moved except on the recommendation of the President and a bill making such provision shall not be introduced in the Council of States provided that no recommendation shall be required under this clause for moving of an amendment making provision for the reduction or abolition of any tax. A bill or amendment shall not be deemed to make provisions of any of the matters aforesaid by reason only that it provides for the imposition of fines or other pecuniary penalties or for the demand or payment of fees for licenses or fees for services rendered or by reason that it provides for the imposition, abolition, remission, alteration or regulation of any tax by any local authority or body for local purposes. A bill which if enacted and brought into cooperation brought into operation would involve expenditure from the Consolidated Front of India shall not be passed by either House of Parliament unless the President has recommended to that House the consideration of the bill. Procedure Generally Article 118 Rules of Procedure Each House of Parliament may make rules for regulating subject to the provisions of this Constitution its procedure and conduct of its business. Until rules are made under Clause 1, the rules of the procedure and the standing orders in force immediately before the commencement of this constitution with respect to the legislature of the Dominion of India shall have effect in relation to Parliament, subject to such modifications and adaptations as may be made therein by the Chairman of the Council of States or the Speaker of the House of the People, as the case may be. The President, after consultation with the Chairman of the Council of States and the Speaker of the House of the People, may make rules as to the procedure with respect to joint sittings of and communications between the two houses. At a joint sitting of the two houses, the Speaker of the House of the People, or in his absence such person as may be, determined by rules of procedure made under clause 3 shall preside. Article 119. Regulation by law of procedure in Parliament in relation to financial business. Parliament may, for the purpose of the timely completion of financial business, regulate by law the procedure of and the conduct of business in each House of Parliament in relation to any financial matter or to any bill for the appropriation of monies out of the Consolidated Fund of India and if and so far as any provision of any law so made is inconsistent with the any rule made by a House of Parliament under Clause 1 of Article 118 or with any rule or standing order having effect in relation to Parliament under Clause 2 of that article such provision shall be made. Article 120 Language to be used in Parliament. Notwithstanding anything in Part 17, but subject to the provisions of Article 348, business in Parliament shall be transacted in Hindi or in English, provided that the Chairman of the Council of States or Speaker of the House of the People or person acting as such, as the case may be, by may permit any member who cannot adequately express himself in Hindi or in English to address the house in his mother tongue. Unless Parliament by law otherwise provides, this article shall, after the expiration of a period of 15 years from the commencement of this constitution, have effect as if the words or in English were omitted therefore. Article 121. Restriction on discussion in Parliament. No discussion shall take place in Parliament with respect to the conduct of any judge of the Supreme Court or of a High Court in the discharge of his duties, except thereupon a motion for presenting an address to the President, praying for the removal of the judge as, th as therein are to provide. Article 122. Courts not to inquire into proceedings of Parliament. 
the validity of any proceedings in parliament shall not be called in question on the ground of any alleged irregularity of procedure no officer or member of parliament whom the powers are vested by or under this constitution for regulating the procedure or the conduct of business or for maintaining order in parliament shall be subject to the jurisdiction of any court in respect of the exercise by him of those powers article 123 power of president to promulgate ordinances during a recess of parliament if at any time except when both houses of parliament are in session the president is satisfied that the circumstances exist which render it necessary for him to take immediate action he may promulgate such ordinances as the circumstances appear to him to require an ordinance promulgated under this article shall have the same force and effect as an act of parliament but every such ordinance shall be laid before both the houses of parliament and shall cease to operation at the expiration of 6 weeks from the reassembly of parliament or if before the expiration of that period the resolutions disapproving it are passed by both houses upon passing of the, sec- the, the second of those resolutions and may be withdrawn at any time by the president explanation where the houses of parliament are summoned to reassemble on different dates the period of 6 weeks shall be reckoned from the later of those dates for the purpose of this clause if and so far as an ordinance under this article makes any provision which parliament would not under this constitution be competent to enact it shall be void